Hey and welcome to day number 21 and in this episode I show you the current status of the body of the vehicle. As you can see I have already established the main forms and I'm currently working on the details and this one is really special because of its simplified and geometric form. It reminds me a little bit of the Tesla truck actually and it was probably built this way for practical reasons. As you can see the base of the vehicle is pretty narrow so they had to widen the body at the top a little bit so that two persons can take place in the inside of this reconnaissance vehicle. We have a driver on the right and in the back of the vehicle there was a seat for the radio operator. The setup for this scene is pretty simple. I started a new design and I have imported the base frame as a part of the chassis. As you can see it's still linked to its source file and then I have created a new component for each element, so one for the body one for the grill, another one for the front plate and one for the exhaust. And I will also continue this way for all of the remaining parts and remaining details. Now let's focus on the main forms of this body because it was actually quite easy and straightforward to build. So all I had to do was to start with one big primary form and then I was cutting away parts using Boolean operations. So let's activate the uh, main body component and then I go back to the very beginning of the timeline. It takes a second. There we are. And again all started with a simple sketch on the front or the back plane. And I've used these sketch entities to make a bolt extrusion, something like this. And uh, then I have continued with another sketch on the side plane and made a few cuts and um, deleted these parts so that I end up with something basic like this. It's important to mention that I've also updated my canvas folder. It now contains another blueprint that shows the vehicle from behind. It was actually this one here and I've used these lines to, to draw my sketches and when you do so it's important that you switch your camera from perspective back to orthographic so that you can uh, look straight through the canvas or the blueprints while you are drawing your sketch lines. Let me switch back to perspective because this looks a little bit nicer and I'm also hide the canvas again so that we can see things easier before I move the history marker over to the right. So the next cut was performed based on a sketch that I've drawn on the top plane. And then I have created another one on the side plane to tilt this face of the front slightly backwards. And now the real fun begins because I'm using surfaces to detail this rough shape even more. Before I show you what I have done, I would like to highlight and point out some of the core strengths of Fusion 360. And this is that you are not forced to stick with one modeling approach or one uh, modeling method. So let's say you start with something that's available in the solid tab, then you can always turn a solid into a surface. You can uh, take advantage of all of the functions that you will find in the surface environment and then you can eventually turn a surface model back into a solid again. And this is exactly what I've done in the following steps. While I was looking at my reference images, I've noticed that this face here is still kind of off. So it was time to introduce two additional sketches. So one sketch line at the bottom here and another one at the top. And I have used them together with the surface loft command to create an additional surface body. So it was this one here. And then I have used the extend command to turn it into an open box, followed by the patch command to create a cap. And then I have used the knit function to knit the two surfaces together. So when you take a look at the browser tree, you can see that both surface bodies turn into a solid body. And last but not least, I have used this solid body to make a Boolean operation and to cut away this edge or this area from our main body. Now the back part looks correct but the front part is still a little bit off so I was doing the same procedure again. I was drawing two additional sketches. Let me show you also these uh, sketch lines. Let's hide the one from before and I have used these guys to create another loft or another loft surface in this case. So again we have 
the main body and a newly created surface. I have extended the surface a little bit. I got rid of uh, a few of these faces and to simply select and delete faces of a solid body, you have to switch to the surface tab first to make this work so that these delete surface icons appear in the timeline. And then I was trimming away some of the remaining surfaces using this triangle like so. And last but not least, I was deleting this and reconstructing the front plane with another surface loft. And then I got rid of this big surface here first, used the loft command to fill this triangular area at the front. Then I have inverted the normals, stitched or knitted everything together and used the patch tool one more time to fill in this big gap here before I was knitting everything together again to turn it into a solid body. As you can see here, we have now a set of flat or planar surfaces and this one here has a nice, a little curvy uh, twist from the uh, back side to the front like it's visible on the original uh, body of the vehicle. As you can see, it is totally fine to switch between solid models and surface models as long as you can keep track of what's going on in the timeline. If you do this too often, it maybe makes sense to turn off um, the design history and to continue in a more direct editing or direct modeling approach. But it always depends on what you are planning with the model. So in my case, I already know that I probably have to go back to a previous stage, make large adjustments on the model and have these adjustments updated to the uh, current state. So I try to keep the parametric history as clean and as organized as possible. Then let's see what's next in the list. I have a couple of extrude features here that deform the front of the body, followed by a few delete face features to get rid of these faces here. As you can see, the solid body turns into a surface body again. I have used a surface loft to bridge the bottom face and the top face, a patch function to close off this triangle, followed by another patch to restore or rebuild the center face. I have knitted everything together and completed the main shapes with the mirror function. And now it was time to use the thicken command to hollow the body. This becomes obvious when I enable the section analysis. As you can see, I have just introduced some thickness to these surfaces. And then I have applied a push and pull command to the front face to open the body at the front. And I have also used another sketch line to cut the body into two pieces. So now I have uh, a bottom piece and a top piece. So this was heavily inspired by the miniature model I've used as a reference. And the idea behind this was to make the, the next step a little bit easier where I have placed all of the openings, the hatches and uh, the windows to uh, the body. The next steps are easy as I was just using the planar faces, draw some additional sketches and uh, use the extrude function to cut out the openings for the windows and the door at the rear of the vehicle. And I have completed this by creating the bulge for the engine. So it was this one here and I have used some direct editing or direct modeling techniques to adjust these triangular faces. So basically I have just used the move tool to rotate these guys a little bit to achieve the desired forms. Last but not least, I added the two handles for the front plate and the perforation for the exhausting pipe. And then it was time to create a few additional components and start working on the details like the grill on the front, the front plate that protects the grill and the engine behind it, and uh, the exhausting pipe. So let me switch to the top level assembly and move the timeline over to the very right so that we can see the latest state. I have also connected the front plate with the body uh, through a simple revolute joint. 
and I'm going to continue from here and add additional details step by step. All right, then that's it for today's video. I hope you liked the progress and I'm going to show you how to create uh, single details in the next videos. So thanks for tuning in. And if you like the content, subscribe, like the video and see you in the next one.